let's get started. So in yesterday's session, what we discussed, we created process. And in that process, we uh, looked into multiple other things. So let me just create one more process over here. I'm just going to name it multi-calculation. demo as I mentioned that we need to keep our description properly with us so that it is good for maintainability review from a review perspective yeah so in the last session we actually looked into decision stage then we looked into calculation data items this is what we and anchor uh, and end so these were the stages which we have covered so far. Now, now let, okay. Now going ahead with the uh, requirement that we have to do. Suppose I am doing some calculation over here. I'm adding two data items. So first of all, I'll create two data items and then I will configure it. Okay. So I have two data items. One is X. This is number data type. I'll be putting some data type over here. Initial value. I can put twelve. Then I'm going to configure another data item. OK, this is also number. I'm going to put some initial value over here. All right. And in the calc stage, I'm going to add it. So this stage is addition. OK, into this addition, what I'm going to do, I'm going to sum these two numbers. And I'm going to store the output in another uh, data item which is not there so i will create it from here okay i did it and i clicked on z so see i it, it is appearing now okay so this is now appearing another data item which i just created okay now apart from doing the addition i want to do one more calculation over here that i want to do division okay so what i'm doing that my division uh, expression, so this is my expression builder. So I'm going to Z divided by X, OK? And I'm going to store this value into Z itself. So this is my, these are my two calculation stages which I have added, OK? Let me now link it. OK, I just wanted to check if my, um, Z, which is coming over there, is it greater than 2 or something? So is it valid or not? If I have to check something, then what we use? We used we use decision stage, right? So I'm going to use decision stage over here. OK, and let me just link it first. OK, let me configure a decision stage. So what we are checking is Z value. OK, I, mean, I just put it over here. And what I'm going to do it now, that we are checking if Z is greater than 2. OK? OK, so if Z is greater than 2, then it will follow this path, because this is yes path. So if this condition is falling true, then it will follow this path. If this condition is not falling true, it will follow this path. Let's go ahead and run this. There are, there are no errors, right? So we can go and run it. OK. Yes, so it is greater than 2, right? So Z is when we are going ahead with addition and division, both the calculations. So Z is coming as 2.9, which is good, greater than 2. Right now, let me just re uh, make some changes over here. So I'm just making this numbers lesser. I'm just making it 3. OK, let me run it now and see whether it is following the other path or not. Yes, it is following because it is now coming 1.25. It is following the other path. Now the thing is, in the real-time scenario, you will come across situations where you have to perform multiple calculations, right? So if you will keep on adding calculation stages like this, it will be uh, from your maintainability perspective also, and it is not very good because you know you are adding so many calculation stages, and it can cause confusion also. For that purpose, Blue Prism has provided multi-calc stage over here. So I'm going to use multi-calc. 
stage here. So what I'm going to do, well, let's configure multi-calc stage. So over here, we are doing addition and division. OK, so my first uh, calculation is what? That we want to do the sum over here. So we are adding two numbers, x and y, and we are storing it into z. OK, now I'm going to add one more calculation here. So I can add as many calculations which I want to do as part of my multiple calculation stage. OK, now what I'm going to do, I, I'm going to divide z by x. So this is how it will look like. And I'm going to store this value again into z. OK, if I want to have to have multiple other calculations, that also I can do. But for now, I have these two calculations which I want to do over here. So I did it and I will click on OK. OK, now I just want to have proper linking over here. OK, so this is the linking. And then this is where I want to go ahead with. OK, now I have not removed addition and all. Right? You may think that uh, uh, addition, division, I have not stages whether it will follow this what? No. This path will never be followed. Why? Because when my process will start, it will come to it is not linked with the addition, right? So even if I have not removed it, it is it will work fine. But yeah, in the actual scenario, you will remove it. But for now, just to show just from demo purpose, I am not removing it for now. Let's run it because last time with these values, the Z was invalid because it was one point something, and that is why it was less than two. So let's run it again. Exactly, right? So it is following the right path as expected. It means that whenever you need to perform multiple calculations, you need to go ahead with the multiple calculation stage and not the calculation stage, because this is where you can have multiple calculations done. And also one point to remember, if you just look it over here, these, uh, these things are performed sequentially, right? So first, this uh, expression over here that will be performed and then the another calculation will be performed right so the way you want to perform your calculation you have to put it in the same order so please remember uh, this is one more thing which is best practices when you will be telling it uh, sometimes in your interviews also it can be asked that uh, how you are going to configure it so you have to mention that you have to put your calculations in the same order in which you want to execute it OK, so uh, now let's go ahead. OK, so this was working fine. Let me reset. Reset, we remember, we uh, discussed about it yesterday. And please remember that any time when you want to run it, please reset it first. Because when we are resetting it, it is putting my data items value as the initial one. So it is resetting my data item values as well. Yeah. So every time when you have to run it, you have to reset it first. OK, so with this, I we can just go and save this process, addition and deletion through multicad. OK, let me save it and close this one. Now let's go ahead with another process. I'm just creating a new process. Some of the times uh, you will require to go ahead with a loop, right? When I'm saying we have to go ahead with a loop, what does that mean? So it means that uh, because whatever we have learned uh, so far, that was more to, towards, you know, it was following one uh, kind of path and all right. So the basic principle of loopism is to automate a repetitive work, right? We will keep on doing things, same things again and again. So we need to understand if we have to perform something repetitively, how we will be doing it, right? So when we have to automate repetitive work uh, and as such process, we'll probably need to repeat same steps over uh, again, again and again. So uh, let's go ahead over here and create one circular path. This is my circular path. I'm just going to put some proper description over here. Circular path demo. OK, let's finish it. So basically, what I want to do, I want to perform some 
we i want to repeat some steps again and again right and so because so far we have only looked at simplistic linear paths but the reality is that we will want to create diagrams that follow some sort of circular path so although most stages have only uh, one outbound link there is no limit on the number of inbound links uh, a stage can have so this means that a stage can be approached from more than one direction let's go ahead and uh, experience the same so what i am going to do first is, let me create two data items over here so i'm just going to make it that what is the maximum loop count how many times i want, want to iterate it so i let me just give it a data type as number i want to iterate it for 10 times okay this is how i will set up i have this current loop count and i'm going to put the right uh, data type and currently I'm assigning initial value as zero. Okay. So I'm going to perform two things now. First of all, I'm just going to increase this current count. Increase current count. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to add one. So as many times I will reach to this stage, I want to increase it by one, right? So, and I'm going to store this val same value in the same data item, okay? So this is how I have configured my calc stage. Now going to decision stage. So whenever I have to check something, we used to go for decision stage, okay? You come to decision stage, and what we are going to check if the maximum uh, uh, count is reached, right? So let me see if loop is still pending or not. And what I'm going to check if my current loop count is less than my maximum loop count. So this is my current loop count. This is less than maximum loop count, okay? So what we are saying, if my current loop count is less than maximum loop count, it means my loop is pending. So it needs to go back to increase the current count, right? Let me link these things then, all the stages, okay? And this is my yes path, right? So if I will be going ahead with this, see how bad it is looking, right? So let me just uh, do use anchor stage. You remember yesterday also we have used anchor stage. So this is for looking field perspective. And this is uh, very important in such cases just now when we are using it. So this is how I have now connected. OK, now I'm just going to connect this one. And this looks good. OK, so basically what we are expecting as part of this uh, exercise that we will have to check this. My current loop count is zero. Every time when I'm coming across this, my calc stage is increasing the current count by one. Right. And then I'm checking if my current loop count value, if it is less than maximum loop count, if it is less means my loop is pending then it will go over there and it will follow the loop and it will keep on increasing value and keep on checking over here. In case if it is not less than maximum loop count, in that case, it will end, right? Let's run it and see. No validation error, right? Run it. See, and you can see that the values, how uh, data item values are changing. Right, every time when it is going through this, it is changing. And this is how our repetitive process is because currently, what is my process? My process is to increase current count, right? And I want to perform this uh, activity n number of times. And what is that n number? That is my maximum loop count. So if I want to perform certain activity n number of times, that is where we will be using this kind of looping. Right, and that is exactly what Duprism is meant for. That you have to perform multiple activities in a repetitive way. So, whatever activity you have to perform, this is where you are going to set, and then you are going to put a loop that it will be performing same activity again and again. So, this is called circular path. 
over here into blue prism okay so now if you see the value both these values are matching because my current loop count value is increased and now it has reached to 10 and it is because not less than max loop count and so my loop ended yeah so let me reset and let me save this exercise my circular loop completed okay let me save this okay so we looked into uh, multiple things now that we looked into how to use multical we looked into how to use circular path right now i'm going to use very important concept and that is collection right so let's go ahead because uh, what happens that usually you don't have you know only one single data into that you want to have a collection of data so let's go ahead and create another demo another process we created and this is for collections and loop demo and let me put the same over here as well double click to open the process it will open into process studio okay this is how it will look like okay so first of all when we are saying we need to have a collection so let's go ahead and define one collection so this is our collection stage just drag it over here so i want to set it as order okay so this is my order collection so i want to uh, set that i have got certain things with me i want to place order in order to do first of all i will define that what are the fields into this collection so i'm going to add a couple of things here so uh, i can have item id and i can put it as text then i have order quantity how many uh, quantities i want to order for this item so i'm just putting this as number and what is the order date okay so what is the date and when i place this order okay so suppose i am running one um, shop and over there i have a system over there okay i want i'm putting some order uh, over there so i have got item id and uh, for each and every item i have got item id and then i'm i'm placing that how many orders uh, how many quantities of that particular item i want to place order for that will i will be putting into this order quantity and that when i am placing this order that is something which is going into order date okay now let's go ahead and put set some initial values let me add a couple of rows here okay so what i'll be doing item id it can be 1111 then i have order quantity suppose i want to place uh, four orders of it and I'm placing it today then let's go ahead and set another row here so you can you know when you have to actually go ahead and check that what these are you can actually uh, understand that maybe these are your excel rows so this is your one row this is your another row yeah I want to place uh, six orders for this one and I placed this order yesterday okay I have got another ID and I want to uh, order 10 items over here and I place this order on 7th of May. Okay, so with this I will just mark the last one. Okay, I can say it, is, it was marked on 4th. Okay, so basically I have put some initial values for my collection. Uh, stage over here okay i just will click on okay so this is how i have configured my uh, collection stage okay now what i want to do maybe i want to check that uh, what is the total quantity of orders which i have placed so far right so i'm going to first add one data item over here to count total quantity And this will be a number, so data type is number, and there is initial value as zero. Okay, so this is how I have configured. Now, what I want that I want to whatever orders are here. So currently I have four rows over here, right? 
out of all four rows i want to access this order quantity and i want to take a sum of all these rows one by one so when i am saying i have to do this activity one by one it means i need to go ahead with some loop and please check that as i am going to use loop it will come up with two so usually whenever uh, whatever we have looked so far that there is to be just one uh, uh, input over here now you can see it has got uh, two stages actually mentioned here one is loop start another one is loop loop end right so when whenever we use loop then we need to tell the loop that which collection it has to go to because so basically you can you know if you have any other programming language experience you can actually uh, correlate it with kind of arrays right in fact that has also got collections but to be simplistic you can actually connect it with arrays right so your array uh, and also every time when you have to loop in actually you used to access each and every element of your array similarly you have got your collection it has got multiple records so these are your multiple records your multiple records are here and every time you want to access one record one by one so when you have to do it one by one that is where you will be using loop and because you are using loop you will have to tell the loop that which collection it has to work on so let let me open it and here if you see i have got this collection so in this collection field i am going to define because right now over here only one collection is there So only one collection is appearing. I will go and select this. Okay, so this is my uh, how I have currently uh, configured my loop stage. Now what I want to do that every time I'm into this loop, I want to do some calculations. So I'm just going to use this calculation stage. Let me configure it. So this what we are doing that we are counting count total quantity. Okay. and what we are going to do basically so i'm going to store this value into total quantity okay if you see here this is a very important piece uh, look over here that in this order i had ordered order dot item id what was my item id item id was text so if you see here your order dot item id so how uh, the fields are accessed for collections your collection name dot your field name right so name of my collection here is order so it is order dot right so whatever is the collection name so order is my collection name and then item id was my field name and i had said that uh, field type as text right so that is appearing over here in the text right similarly order date order date was a date right i had uh, configured that as date data type was date so that is appearing as order dot order date similarly order dot order quantity because that i had set uh, i had configured the order quantity field as number right so now what i am going to do in my this total quantity i want to add my order dot order quantity okay and this is what i am going to store into total quantity okay now we can link these stages let's link it okay and run it there are no errors so validation we will have to check and then let's go ahead and run it see how the values are changing right now it was order row 2 now order row 3 order row 4 so one by one each row of this order collection was accessed using this loop and see my total quantity it is calculated over here so this is how you will be using collection and loop and collection is loop is something which you, you are going to use many times so your collection and loop concept should be very clear right so collection and loop we just looked over here and collection and loop stages add it okay so we looked into a uh, decision choice choice yeah so now let's go ahead with choice calculation we have looked into multicalc data item collection loop this is what we have looked into right now let's go ahead with choice 
before uh, Sorry, we can go. Yeah. Yeah, so my question is um, when you want to use the collection and low, when you're setting up the order, how do you determine what you're connecting to your loop before you do the count without quantity? Sorry, I didn't get your question. So when you're setting up your collections and loop, right? Using the yeah. um, multiple uh, choice, where you have the order row one or four. Yeah. Yeah. How do you set that up to connect with your total count quantity? So uh, when I had created this loop and when I configured it, so when you will look into it, initially when I was configuring, I actually associated this loop with this org collection, right? So I had my order collection, which I had already created. I associated yeah. my this order collection with my this loop. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, go ahead. It's fine. I get it. Okay. All right. Okay. Fine. So uh, let's go ahead with choice stage now because um, let me close this. Okay. I made some. Yes. I'll create another uh, process over here and I will name it choice stage. Okay. Next, it is choice demo. Okay, one more thing I will uh, tell you over here to see. This is my name of the, this information uh, stage is also very important. If you see what information it is giving to us, it is saying that it is choice demo, which, which is name of my, uh, this process. And the description is coming over here. So right now, because both my name of the process and description are same, so that is why you are uh, able to look at it like this, yeah? So uh, just see that, and it, then it is showing you that when the process was created, it was created by which user. So right now I'm logging using admin uh, user, and that is why it's telling me that which user has created it. So at any point of time, if you want to know, because uh, you'll be having a uh, right set of users with you, right? And everybody will be having a proper name and all. So with that, you will be able to understand uh, who had created this one and what who had made changes into this one last so last change by is also appearing over here yeah. now let's go into uh, choice stage so first of all let's understand why do we need to go ahead with the choice stage so choice stage is a kind of extended version of decision stage so in the last uh, session we had looked into decision stage what decision stage was helping us with so decision stage helps to take you through different paths based on certain criteria, right? But it can take only two paths, right? Based on the uh, expression which we had provided, based on that, it will evaluate the expression. It will check whether the uh, expression is true or false. Based on that, it can take only two paths. But what if you need to take multiple paths based on different other criteria? Then that is where you should be using choice stage. So the functionality of choice stage is same as decision stage, where it can route the process flow depending upon certain condition. But the difference here is that decision stage can have only two conditions, whereas your choice stage can have more than two conditions, right? And you want different process paths to follow based on those criteria. Okay, so let's go ahead uh, and just see how it uh, works. I'm going to use my choice stage. Okay. Can you see? When I created my choice stage, it automatically comes up with other, otherwise. It means you have to set multiple things over here, multiple criteria. And if none of those criteria are met, then what? Yeah, so this is your otherwise stage. Okay, now let me first uh, create something over here. You can create two data items. So suppose, for example, I have uh, put, uh, employees data, right? I have number of years of experience of employees. And based on their years of experience, I have to find their designation, right? So I'm just going to 
configure my first data item. This is my years of experience. Okay, data type is number. And right now, uh, I will set this value later. Okay, so years of experience. Then I have got my designation. So designation is a uh, text. No initial value I'm setting for now. Okay. So let me go ahead and just tell you something. So suppose this is what I want to configure. So these are my certain criteria, right? That if my years of experience is 0 to 1, then my designation should be AAC. If my designation is more than 1 to 4, it is my designation will be SE and so on. So AAC till MD, this is the experience level which we have to configure over there. So I have to add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So eight criteria are there which I want to configure over here. If I would have used decision, I could have only two process flow paths. But using this, I can have multiple. So in this case, with this set of example, I am going to set eight criteria over here. And then ninth one is my otherwise part. Right? So let's go ahead and configure choice. So let's see, add three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, and I have got AC, AC. And then I have got VP, I have director, and finally I have got MD. Okay, so what I'm going to do over here, I will be setting that what is my years of experience, and based on that, how uh, it should be counting it, right? So let me go ahead and do it. So my years of experience, I have created years of experience. You can use your expression builder. So this time I will show you using expression builder. I go to expression builder now. Okay, let me just remove it for now. And I'm going to use because so basically what I want to use is my years of experience is zero to one. That is where I will be using this particular, uh, uh, then it should follow this criteria, right? So my experience is greater than equal to zero and years of experience is less than one. So I'm saying and, it, what it is, it is logic, right? So I'm going to use and, yeah? So these are the inbuilt, the prism inbuilt functions which you will be using over here. So I came to logic, I clicked on and, and these are my two operations. Now you can go and click on this again to create the first operand. So what I want that, again, this is a logic that I want to check if my years of experience is greater than or equal to zero. So I will go to logic again. I will see greater than or equal to. So here are my uh, operand one is years of experience. I'm saying if it is greater than or equal to zero, now paste it. Once you will paste it, click over here on paste, then it will appear over here. OK, and click on OK then. So this is your first operand. Your second operand, again, we will be using expression builder. And I'll go to my years of experience is less than 1. So I can just write it like this also. Or I could have used my another logic. So I could have gone over here is less than. And here I would have used you know my years of experience. And this is 1. Then also it would have. Let me just remove it and paste it from here. Same result, right? Because, uh, but usually what happens when you are using expression builder, it takes time. But to begin with, you should be using expression builder so that you don't, you know, your expressions are not invalid. And uh, so for uh, to start with, you can use expression builder. But onwards, you know, you have to do some practice and also that because the expression builder takes time. So you have to, you know, do some practice so that you have proper hands on and you can use it. Yes. And let me just paste it. Okay, so years of experience, I have, uh, if you can see, the, my criteria here is that my years of experience is greater than or equal to zero and years of experience is less than one. That point of time, my designation will be ACO. Sorry, let's paste it over here. So no worries. I will use and I will put it over here. Next one is that if my years of experience is 
greater than or equal to 1, but it is less than 4, then I will be SSC. You can do the same configuration for other ones as well. Uh, with the age of 30, uh, 60, we retire and we start working from the age of 25. So usually, I'm assuming that with total years of experience, 35 people are getting retired. So up to this experience level, the person is MD. OK, let me just click on OK. Now click, uh, now go ahead to the otherwise. OK, so I have got one otherwise also. I'll come to otherwise in a minute. So just make it more readable. So these are different criteria, and for each criteria, if you see, I have one node created, right? So these are various nodes which are signifying different criteria. OK. Let's go ahead and now configure it further. So basically, what we are saying that these are my different criteria. Based on my criteria, I want to do some calculations. So this is how I'm going to use. One more thing to remember, please. Yeah, just pay attention over here. If I have, because see, I have to use create these many uh, calculation stages as many nodes I'm having for it. So if I will be going ahead and dragging and dropping, I will have to do it those many number of times. And there is a faster way to get it done that if you have to create only one, you can use drag and drop option. But if you have to you know, create multiple uh, uh, stage, calculation stage, or any other stage, at that point of time, click over here. If you see, your mouse has dynamically changed. It is now showing calculation, dynam calculation cursor. It means your calculation stage is associated with your cursor. Just click over here, and we'll, we'll keep on adding those many calculation stages. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So I will require nine calculation stages. Okay, I'll go ahead and click on pointer. I told you yesterday there is a uh, faster way to get it done. Click on F2. I'm not going ahead and clicking on pointer. Rather, I'm going to click on F2 from my um, this keypad and see. This is also appearing fine now. Now I'm just going to align it with each node. All right. Uh, let me just go and link all these stages. So I will just link start. And sorry, this is my cut stage. And the last one, I'm going to link with otherwise uh, option. So if none of these criteria are meeting, in that case, it will follow this path, otherwise path, right? And I'm going to uh, link all these calc stages with my end stage. So basically, what I'm saying that we will start with it. We, I'll be putting years of experience over here. It will check years of experience. Based on years of experience, it will do some validations. It will check something. And then it will follow the suitable path based on the criteria. Right? It, uh, I'm still having one more configuration left. So these are my calculation stages, which I have added. But we have to configure it as well. So let's configure it. So this one is for AC. So I'm just saying the AC. And I'm going to put in my designation. So this is my designation. So my saying designation is AC. 
yeah and because this is a text look into it please carefully that and this will be asked you know if this is something which is asked in your interviews also and in your exam also certification exam that you know this is your text and that is why you are putting it into double quotes right it it have been a number you remember how we were doing it we were putting it into brackets okay but because this is my text and that's why i am putting it into double quotes okay so i configured calc stage 1 Let's go ahead and type two. So this is my SE, and I'm saying that my designation is SE. Let's do it and store it into designation. Uh, okay. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for other calculation stages as well. Store it into designation dated item. So this is how I'm going to configure all my calculation stages, which I have added over here. So this one was for uh, VP. Okay. Store it in the same uh, designation. This is my MD, and my designation here is MD. I'm going to store this value in my designation data item, and uh, that's it. Now, only thing left is in otherwise, right? So, in that case, I'm saying that this is invalid input. In the year of experience, which was shared to me, this was in invalid. So, invalid. years of experience so i'm just putting it over here like this okay and storing in the same data item so now everything is configured and now i have to set some years of experience over here so let me set suppose i am having initial value is 4 so i have i'm saying that uh, uh, total number for years of experience of this employee is 4 let me see which path it follows see there are no errors so you need to validate your process before running so it followed the path of ssc four years completed and then now you are ssc so done okay let me use some other one so just reset it and assign some other value suppose i have got 16 years of yeah maybe 26 years of experience so with this when i will run it i should be md yep i am md now fine so with this see it is following uh, the right set of path which you have uh, defined and configured here so if you have got multiple criterias and based on your multiple different criterias you want your process to follow different path you will be using choice stage because your decision stage is capable enough to follow only two process paths right Okay, so with this uh, choice stage, uh, this choice stage was very uh, comprehensive because you need to set it up over here, the, each and everything over here, right? Now, in the real scenario, definitely you are not going to input your years of experience like this. It will be coming to you in the form of collection, right? We just completed in the last exercise. We completed collections, right? Now, what I'm going to do, I want that. there should be some looping mechanism i should be having one collection okay and that collection stage will be having all my rows over here which i want to execute okay and then i want to loop each and every record one by one and then i follow i want to follow this path okay how i will be doing it so this is the exercise this is my consolidation exercise so whatever we do into a particular session at the end we consolidate so this is your consolidation exercise so basically in this choice exercise only you are going to use loop and collection stages how to do it so 
let's go ahead and do it. I'm going to first of all create one collection stage, right? And this is my, I will say this is my employees data, right? Let me add a couple of fields here. So I can have name, name also here. This is my name is text. Okay. I'm saying this is name of the employee. Okay. I can have his years of experience. So this is EXP. And this is my years of experience is in number. So I'm saying this is my years of experience. Then I have got the designation. The designation is again text. OK, and this is your designation. So this is how I have added three fields into my collection. I'm now going to set some initial values. So I'm going to add a few rows over here. OK, so let me just put some name. John has experience of four years. Uh, designation, it is something I want my program to calculate for me. Yeah, so I'm not, I'm just leaving it blank. Then I have Kirk. Kirk has got eight years of experience. David has got nine years of experience. Okay, and Simon has got 12 years of experience. Steve has got seven years of experience. Then I have uh, Martin, who has got 20 years of experience. Then I can say I can have two more people over here, or I think we are good to do it, right? So we can remove the remaining rows over here. So let's go ahead with six rows here. Click on OK. So you, what you have done, you have configured your collection. So how you configured your collection? You first added row of fields. Right, so these are your fields. If you just compare it with your Excel, these are your uh, your headings actually, right? So these are your column names. So these are your column names, and these are your rows into it. Right? Now click on OK. So you have created this. So basically, you don't require your years of experience and designation data item. So we can remove it. And now I can go and I, this is my employee collection. And because I want to iterate through my employee connection, how I will be doing it, I will have to use loop, right? So I'm going to use loop. This is my loop. This is loop start, and this is loop end. I'm going to use loop end over here. And furthermore, loop will come in between over here. OK, now let's see uh, how I told you that how you will associate your loop with your collection. Click on loop start. OK, once you click on loop start, it asks you that this loop, how this loop will iterate, which collection it needs to iterate. So this is where you need to tell that I have employees collection, and I want to iterate through employees rows as part of this loop. So you have associated your loop with the collection. Click on OK. OK, this is how you have linked the, both these two stages, loop and collection stage. Right now, let me just go and link it properly. So start. So wait, my process will start. OK. And then I, my loop has started. When my loop has started, I want to go to choice stage. So as soon as my first row is received here, I want to start my choice stage. And then I will have to see that where my loop is ending. So my loop is ending as soon as I'm done with one process flow path. So suppose I had entered four and I reached to SE. This is where my loop will end. So I this is time when I need to link all my these the calc stages with my loop end. Right? So you see, I have not removed anything from any linking between collection you know, this uh, calculation and end stage. Uh, what I'm doing, I'm just creating a new link between collection and loop end and the link which was already existing between this calculation stage and end stage that has actually removed okay 
So I did not have to take a pain of removing because this is something what Prism itself is doing for me. Okay. So see every calculation stage is now linked with loop stage. Okay. And then now I will go and I will link my loop end and end. So this is how my process is now completed. Let's just quickly review that what changes I have made. Is it done now? No, it's not done. Why? Because if you see here in your choice stage, you are still having years of experience, but now you don't have years of experience data item. That is something which you have already removed. So what you need to replace it with? You need to replace it with collection, this employees dot experience, right? Remember, so every time when we have to access a field into collection, so collection name dot your field name. So this using this dot notation, you will be accessing your field over here. So I want to use instead of you know this years of experience, I want to remove my years of experience from here, and I want to use employee dot experience here instead. So this is employee dot experience. Yeah. So everywhere when you are using this, you need to change it with employee dot experience okay so let me do it over here you can drag and drop also or you can paste it the way you want i'm doing it like this okay so i'm done with uh, my changes over here so instead of using it from a data item what i did i used collection and from collection i used this experience tree and with that, I associated my all the choice criteria. I'll click on OK. And where I want my these uh, final outcomes to be stored. So if you remember, in each and every calculation stage, what we did, we had put the store result into designation. But there is no designation text appearing now, right? Because that is something which we had already removed. So I will have to put it with the right the, uh, place where my output will be stored. So in your collections, if you remember, in the collection, we have three fields. And name and designation, I had kept uh, the data type as text. And that is why into text, my employees.designation and employees.name, these two uh, fields are appearing because this is, so these are your two placeholders, which are text type, right? And because I wanted to store this value into designation, so this is how I will use it. Same thing you have to perform for each and every stage because you need to change it from designation stage to employees.designation. So let's make the changes everywhere where it was earlier referring to designation and now you need to refer it to collection. Okay, so I'm done with these changes, right? So everywhere in my calculation stage, uh, the output I stored it into this collection tree. Okay, now I'm going to start. So let's see if there is any error. There is no error. Good. So let's go ahead and run it. See how the values are changing into collection, right? It is now row number two, which is being executed. It is done. Now it is row number three. So I have got six rows into my collection. So all the six rows are appearing, and those are executing. And this is how it is appearing into your collection stage, right? Okay, it has ended now. Now let me open this collection. Okay, so this was the uh, these were the fields which we had create uh, created earlier when we were configuring the collection. These were the initial values which we had entered here, and designation was left blank. Please notice that designation is now entered because. Initial value, we had not entered designation. We wanted our process to identify that what should be the designation based on years of experience. And based on the years of experience, whatever designation was appearing over here, we wanted it to get populated here. So if you see my current value, and this is how Blue Prism is effectively you know, using it. So your collection is there. Your collection right now, I had six rows. You can have n number of rows over there. So that is how it will be repetitive. And what it was doing for each and every record, what it was doing, 
it was finding that what should be the designation based on the years of experience so you don't have to go and manually check it so what you did you use blue prism process to do you do it for you and in the initial value designation was blank but now designation field is entered right so this is how you will be using calculus so what we did we had initially created a choice stage using choice because i was taking one value at a time only but in real scenario you will not be having this single value you will be having n number of values which may be which you will have to capture into collection and how you will access your collection you will access your collection using collection and loop the linkage between loop and collection how you will establish you will establish by clicking on the loop start so do you have two parts of it you loop start and loop end but you will click on loop start part and over there you can assign that which collection you want to associate your loop with okay so that whatever records are there into collection so loop will go ahead and process it whatever you want to process as part of your this loop this is what you are going to perform so if you remember in my initial uh, collection uh, example what we did we just were going through each and every collection row and we were adding the order quantity right because that was something which i wanted to perform repetitively but now what what i wanted to perform i wanted to perform that you know my designation should be calculated based on certain criterias so those because these in any criterias are more than two otherwise i could have followed decision and i could have used decision stage but because it is more than two so i prefer to go ahead with the choice stage because choice does the same thing but the only difference is that it can it gives you the option where you can go and check you can have multiple criterias over there because you had multiple criterias it looked into each and every row, row over here in your collection and it identified that what should be the designation and your collection was finally updated with the designation which you wanted to calculate right so what we covered in today's session today so yesterday session we had focused on decision we focused on calculation and we saw that what data item is also we looked into anchor where you will be using anchor and end so these stages we had looked into in yesterday's session today we have used choice we looked into multi calc stage and we looked into loop and collection stages loop collection mostly go hand in hand why because whatever rows are there into collection you have to loop it through right then only you will use it so your loop and uh, collection will go hand in hand and this is how you will be using big and uh, uh, once you are done with it please go and do these exercises what we have covered so far because this will give you good understanding of loop and collection and loop and collection kind of you know in you know, a basic building block which you should definitely know otherwise you will not be able to proceed further because most of our activities are based on uh, these things collections and loop yeah so we have covered these many stages so far what are our the remaining ones we will be looking into it in our later subsequent sessions so any questions so far Hey, hi, Anvi. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, Chandra Shekhar, tell me. Uh, uh, yeah. Actually, uh, this is not regarding uh, the current. Uh, I mean, uh, the scenario. Yesterday, I tried few process on my own. Yeah. So, uh, where uh, I checked with some uh, multiple calculations, and um, at that time, some output is not. Uh, I mean, uh, I cannot get the output for a few processes. That means uh, I use the calculation. but uh, there is no error is also showing so the validation error is also not there but still uh, the output is not uh, uh, that means uh, i didn't get the output for that one i mean okay if so i can share the is, screen so you use multi calc stage right uh, no no not a multi calculation stage that means i use the different type of calculation there okay but uh, uh, using calculation point, stage only right yeah 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 just only with the okay. calculation stage but uh, at one point properly i mean the value stored in have you configured that properly the data items are matching ah uh, yeah, yeah data items are matching um, i mean uh, at one point of time the everything is fine that means the result are occurring but uh, okay. just in the one stage um, uh, it uh, almost got disappeared 
and uh, even the not a single validation error is also there so i am just little bit confused okay so basically you know uh, i will have to see that what problem because you are saying that it was there is no validation error so validation error when it comes only when there is some problem in your process flow from logical perspective linking perspective you know right set of uh, uh, things are not configured the, those point of time validation error will come but uh, validation error is not coming it means you from your process diagram flow perspective things are fine and you said that it was working fine also right just after yeah. some time it got uh, i mean it was working it means your process was working and then somehow uh, things disappeared right so can you yeah. check i mean you were on the right uh, some of the times you know when we are working for the first time please check if you are on the right pane because you know it it is infinite i told you yesterday right if you just click on adding out over here you will uh, reach up to the end also so please check if you are uh, is it kind of you know you are getting something blank or what so i want to no, see no. that uh, what is uh, coming to you so when can you help me out with the, taking the screenshot that what is the problem because i want to see it that what problem uh, chandra shekhar is getting okay. any other problems uh, did you guys try uh, the exercises which we did yesterday if not please do it and today's exercises are also very important please do that as well okay hello 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 yes yes i can hear you yeah, yeah. Uh, where can we get the exercises is there a pdf document showing the exercises or we will have to bring something up ourselves so these exercises because i myself have created these exercises uh, so there is no pdf for something which you can use to refer it but uh, these exercises i have created so definitely you can ask uh, to asha 24 people to give you the recording so that you can you know you can go through it again and again and this will be kind of uh, at any point of time if you are stuck you can go and refer it also so i All think right. people from asha 24 will be able to help you out with the recording um i have right, a question you. regarding this uh, collection stage yeah yeah uh, so for the collection stage uh, uh, is there any way to import the data set from uh, the excel sheet or something like that or we have to yes, copy it is there. To it is there but that is that we will be covering when we will be going uh, going ahead with the action stage so we have not reached up to that level but yes there we can do okay thanks any other question from anyone so about uh, in fact uh, in the real scenario you will be it, uh, getting it from excel only you will not be configuring it like this yeah? okay fine then i think uh, then we are done for today's session here yeah, so the exercises which we have covered so far please do and uh, do the hands on at your level